nuevos amigos. Bienvenidos al programa. It's a wonderful day and it's great to see you again. Have you been studying your Spanish vocabulary and dialogues from our last lesson? You have? I'm so glad to hear it. Muy bien. Now, be sure you have your Spanish journals by your side and write down the new vocabulary words as we move through today's lesson. Ahora, saquen sus diarios de español y prepárense para escribir. You will remember in our last lesson that the Inca culture was large and ruled over 12 million people at the height of its power. There were 20 languages spoken by the indigenous or native peoples within the empire. Indigenous in Spanish is indígena. El indígena. Say it with me. El indígena. Good. The word language in Spanish is lenguaje. El lenguaje. Repeat after me. El lenguaje. Excelente. When the Spanish came to the new world of the Americas and colonized the lands, they brought with them the Spanish language. The Spanish language is called Castellano. Remember, the double L in Spanish sounds like this. Y. It's the official language of Spain. Say it with me. Castellano. Once again. Castellano. Very good. But how did the Spaniards communicate with the indigenous peoples? They had to learn the new language and speak through translators. Many people today speak more than one language. Even we are learning a new language, aren't we? A translator is a person that communicates with people that speak a different language. Translator in Spanish is traductor. Let's say el traductor together. El traductor. Say it again. El traductor. We will be learning many new things today, so let's begin. What is today's verb? Veamos el verbo del día. El verbo del día es explorar, to explore, explorar. Let's conjugate the verb explorar, to explore. Yo exploro, I explore. Tú exploras, you explore. Él, ella explora, he, she explores. Usted explora. You explore formal. Nosotros exploramos. We explore. Ustedes exploran. You all explore. Here are some new words you will need to know as you learn how Spain colonized the new world and the Spanish language spread throughout Latin America. La colonia, colony. La colonia. El conquistador, conqueror. El conquistador. La expedición, expedition. La expedición. When the Spanish explorers came to the New World, they established colonies. A colony, la colonia, is a territory that has been conquered by foreigners. This is why you will hear the term conquistador. El conquistador or los conquistadores, when you study the history of the Spanish explorers and their expeditions, la expedición to the New World. Some of the reasons why the Spanish went exploring in the new lands were to establish colonies for Spain, find gold, 
seek out new resources and products to trade, and to find new sea routes to China, a rich country with many things to trade and bargain for, like luxury goods such as silks, rare woods, Chinese ceramics, and exotic spices, among many other things. ¿Qué tienes? Yo tengo ollas. ¿Qué tienes tú? Yo tengo maíz. ¿Quieres intercambiar? Claro, te doy dos ollas por cuatro bultos de maíz. How many words did you recognize in our dialogue? Did you hear maíz and ollas? Corn and pots? Excelente! Let's go over the dialogue. Student number one said, ¿Qué tienes? What do you have? ¿Qué tienes? Student number two responded, Yo tengo ollas. ¿Qué tienes tú? This means, I have pots. What do you have? Student number one replied, Yo tengo maíz. ¿Quieres intercambiar? I have corn. Do you want to trade? The word intercambiar means to trade. Intercambiar. Let's say it together. Intercambiar. Once more. Intercambiar. Muy bien. Finally, student number two agreed and said, Claro, te doy dos ollas. Por cuatro bultos de maíz. Sure, I'll give you two pots for four measures of corn. Repeat after me. Claro. Te doy dos ollas por cuatro bultos de maíz. Great! You can see how trading is important when doing business without money. Now, let's learn how Spanish became the fourth most widely spoken language in the world. Latin America extends from Mexico to the southern point of Argentina in South America. There are also some Caribbean islands that are considered Latin American, like Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Cuba. What do all these countries have in common? The Spanish language. Spanish is a language derived from Latin and is similar to French and Italian. The original natives of Latin America did not speak Spanish. They had their own languages, like the Aztecs who spoke Nahuatl, and the Incas who spoke Quechua. It was not until Christopher Columbus and his men came to America in 1492 that Spanish was introduced into the New World. After their arrival, many Spanish explorers traveled to the New World in search of gold, and many stayed in America and learned to communicate with the natives of their regions. At the same time, the natives began to learn Spanish. In addition to the explorers, many Catholic missionaries came to America bringing Christianity to the indigenous population. As these missionaries taught religion to the natives, they used Spanish in their teachings, and many indigenous people were evangelized and learned the Spanish language. Many Spaniards, as well as indigenous people, became traductores, translators between the two nations. As Spanish explorers and settlers came to Latin America, Spanish, or Castellano, became the only language that was shared by every region. It was during the Spanish colonization that each country of Latin America was given its name as we know it now. Mexico, Honduras, Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, and all the rest. There are many viewpoints about the Spanish colonization in Latin America. Some say that it was a brutal conquest, while others think that it created a higher civilization. However, one thing is certain, it brought Spanish to America and it introduced a culture that still influences life today.
Amigos, ¿cómo les va? Espero que bien. I have a new dicho for you today. Make sure you write it down in your diarios de español. El que quiera conquistar, tiene que luchar. This dicho translated to English means, he who wants to conquer must fight. Think about this dicho. It doesn't just mean to fight with violence. It also means that if something is difficult, like a concept in math, then you can conquer it by making extra effort to study and understand it. When you do that, then you have won. Let's say it together. El que quiera conquistar, tiene que luchar. Muy bien. I'll see you next time, amigos. Adios. Wasn't that a good dicho nuevos amigos? If you wish to conquer something, especially a goal that is worthwhile, then you must fight for it. You must make an effort to do your best. When you win or have achieved your goal, then you can be proud that you did something difficult. Now, let's take some time to look at the architecture or design of buildings in the new world. Architecture in Spanish is arquitectura. La arquitectura. Say it with me. La arquitectura. Excelente. Let's watch. We have studied that the architecture of the indigenous people like the Aztecs, Mayans, and Incas was at many times constructed with great stones and even mud. These civilizations constructed buildings and temples in the form of pyramids, and the ruins are still standing today. They are very impressive and tell us about the skill and abilities of the indigenous people. In the same way that the indigenous people built temples for religious ceremonies, the Spanish colonizers brought with them the architectural influences from Spain that were used in churches and buildings where they settled. If you ever go to an old church in any Latin American country, you will find huge wooden doors at the entrance and many arches inside reaching to the ceiling. The arches create a dome look on the ceiling and the roundness at the top at many angles and corners within the church give a calm feeling. Inside a church, you will see the images of saints the Virgin Mary, and Christ in large paintings, murals, or stained glass. Many of these pictures tell a story, such as the birth of Christ, the arrival of Spaniards in America, or the story of a saint. The Spanish architecture and artwork are preserved and admired even today. Many modern architects still use the old techniques of designing arches to enlarge, enhance, and give roundness to their new designs. ¿Qué tienes? Yo tengo collares. ¿Qué tienes tú? Yo tengo chiles. ¿Quieres intercambiar? Claro, te doy un collar por una docena de chiles. It's time to go over the second dialogue and see how many words you recognized from our first dialogue. Student number one asked, ¿Qué tienes? Do you remember what this sentence means from our first dialogue, Nuevos Amigos? That's correct. It means, what do you have? Student number two responded, Yo tengo collares. ¿Qué tienes tú? There is only one new word in this sentence. Can you guess what it is? The word is collares, necklaces. This sentence translates to, I have necklaces. What do you have? Student number one replied, Yo tengo chiles. ¿Quieres intercambiar? Here's that difficult word again, intercambiar. Let's pronounce it together. I know you can. Intercambiar. Once more. Intercambiar. Muy bien. The sentence means, I have chilies. Do you want to trade? Finally, student number two agreed and said, 
¡Claro! Te doy un collar por una docena de chiles. Repeat it after me. ¡Claro! Te doy un collar por una docena de chiles. Okay, I'll give you a dozen chilies for a necklace. Very good, nuevos amigos. Raíces. No somos indios, somos nativos. Los indios en India están. Si no nos conoces, ponte a estudiar. En toda América nos has de encontrar. Nuestras raíces indígenas aún mantenemos. Aztecas, Incas, Taínos o Mayas. Somos los nativos, los originarios. Ni los conquistadores, ni la colonia nos pudieron destruir. This is a powerful poem that speaks to us about endurance and the spirit of a people whose culture has influenced Latin America for hundreds of years. Did you recognize some of our vocabulary words? If you said indígena, colonia, and los conquistadores, then you are correct. This poem reminds us that there are indigenous languages being used in Latin America. The natives of all these countries tell us in this poem that they were there before the Spaniards came to America. They don't like to be called Indians as they have kept their original nation or tribe name. And they will continue to maintain their roots and culture despite the Spanish conquest. The Spanish colonization of Latin America meant that the culture from Spain traveled across the ocean to influence and at many times mix with the various indigenous cultures. For example, in Argentina and Uruguay, people drink yerba mate when they are socializing. Hello, my name is Sebastian Glusman and this is my friend Anthony Moran. We are both teachers and we're going to show you today the tradition of mate, which is a typical custom in Argentina. Uruguay, Paraguay, and south of Brazil. We are both from Argentina and we drink mate every day. This is the mate itself. It's a gourd, a plant, and as you can see at the bottom, the gourd, and has different sizes, shapes, or ornaments. This one has silver all around to protect the mate. And then the bombilla, or straw, which it's the thing that you actually drink the mate from. And as you can see, it's made out of metal, different kind of metals. And you put it inside and you drink from here. And the third and most important part is the sherba mate itself, which Antonio is gonna explain you about. Hi. The sherba mate comes from a tree called the sherba mate tree, okay? And as you can see, It's a bunch of crushed leaves. See that it's green and it has some little sticks that are part of the same tree, as you can see right here. And what you do is you put it inside the mate and with a straw you drink it. Um, the jarro mate is very good. It has a lot of qualities. It has minerals, it has vitamins that make it a very good thing to drink. But it also has a bit of caffeine so it's not too good to drink too much of it. Um, and now we're going to show you how to actually drink it. If you would ever want to drink it, well, you can learn how to do it right now. We're going to show it to you. First, you empty the mate, you take out the straw, then you pour some yerba mate inside of it. You usually have to put three-fourths of the, uh, fill it up with three-fourths of the mate. After you do that, you cover it, you cover the top part of it, and you shake it. You turn it around. And then you take out that dust that makes it too strong. And it also 
makes uh, the bombija, the straw, get full so you can't drink it. So it's good to always clean it up. After you do that, you pour a bit of hot water into it. The water has to be more or less like 160 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. After you do that, you pour a little bit of water and then after that you put the bombilla or the straw on the lower part. After, if you want a bit of sugar in it, you can also put a bit of sugar in it and it makes it uh, easier or uh, sweeter to drink. And after that, you fill it up. Usually you do drink it with some friends, relatives, or people that you usually know. Because as you're going to see right now, I'm going to drink from the straw. Mmm, it's really good. Good, good job, time. Sebastian. I drink, then I pass it back to him. And I put and another he... one. And I'm the one serving, so normally I'm the last one in the round. So I'm going to drink this one myself. It's very nice. Very tasty. And thank you. Thanks for being such a great audience. And I hope you learned something and enjoy it. What an interesting custom! One day, if you're ever in Argentina or Uruguay, you might be invited to try yerba mate. Ahora es tiempo para la composición estudiantil. It's time for your composition. Write a paragraph on how you think the indigenous people of Central and South America learn Spanish. Was it in a classroom setting with a teacher? Was it at a church? At a home? At a trading goods exchange? Describe the surroundings, the clothing of the indigenous people and the Spaniards, and how they treated each other. Have fun doing it! It's time for our review. Let's go over the new things we've learned today, nuevos amigos. The verb of the day was explorar. And in our first dialogue, our students used the sentences Yo tengo ollas. ¿Qué tienes tú? I have pots. What do you have? And Yo tengo maíz. ¿Quieres intercambiar? I have corn. Do you want to trade? Our new vocabulary included the terms El indígena, indigenous. El lenguaje, language. Castellano, Castilian, the official language of Spain. El traductor, translator. We also learned the words for la colonia, colony. El conquistador, conqueror. La expedición, expedition. And architecture, la Arquitectura. In our second dialogue, the students used the following sentences. Yo tengo chiles. ¿Quieres intercambiar? I have chilies. Do you want to trade? Claro. Te doy un collar por una docena de chiles. Okay. I'll give you a dozen chilies for a necklace. Our wise man brought us the dicho. El que quiera conquistar tiene que luchar. He who wants to conquer must fight. Be sure to write today's vocabulary words and your composition in your Diarios de Español. You've worked very hard today, nuevos amigos. I'm so proud of you. You've done a fantastic job. Han hecho Un trabajo fantástico. If you have any interesting information or fun ideas 
about Latin American culture and history, then I'd like to hear from you. Write me a message and have your teacher email it to me. Mándame un correo electrónico. The email address is nuevosamigos at dallasisd.org. Remember, when you learn to speak another language, you also make new friends. Acuérdense, cuando aprendemos más de un idioma, podemos hacer nuevos amigos. Adiós. Nuevos amigos, hola, aquí estoy de nuevo. ¿Listos para aprender? Great, because I'm ready to teach you. I hope you've been sharing the wonderful facts that you've been learning in our lessons with your family and friends. Take out your Spanish journals and keep them by your side to write down the new vocabulary words that you will be learning today. Saquen sus diarios de español y prepárense para escribir. In our last lesson, we learned how the Spanish language spread as Spain colonized the New World. One of the areas where colonies were established is now the beautiful, tropical country of Costa Rica. Costa Rica means rich coast. Coast in Spanish is Costa. La costa. Say it with me. La costa. Today, we will learn about Costa Rica and discover some of its rich history and amazing beauty. Costa Rica is located in Central America and is known for its coffee, its tropical rainforests, and its volcanoes. Coffee in Spanish is café. El café. Repeat after me. El café. You will probably recall that rainforest in Spanish is el bosque tropical. We learned about the rainforest in our previous lessons for second grade. Let's review our pronunciation and say El Bosque Tropical together. El Bosque Tropical. Very good! A special geographical fact about Costa Rica is that it has volcanoes. One of them is so large, it has nine separate places where it has erupted. ¡Qué interesante! Volcano in Spanish is volcán. El volcán. It's time for an important part of our lesson. What is it? Sí, es correcto. It's time for our verb of the day. Adelante con el verbo del día. El verbo del día es viajar, to travel, viajar. 
conjugate the verb viajar, to travel. Yo viajo, I travel. Tú viajas, you travel. Él, ella viaja, he, she travels. Usted viaja, you travel formal. Nosotros viajamos, we travel. Ustedes viajan, you all travel. Here are some new words you will need to know as we study the country of Costa Rica. The term confederation in Spanish is confederación. La confederación. Say it with me. La confederación. A confederation, confederación, is an alliance or a union of several states that have given political power to a central authority. The word wheat in Spanish is trigo. El trigo. Repeat after me. El trigo. Excelente. Costa Ricans know a tongue twister with the word trigo. It goes like this. Tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en un trigal. It means three sad tigers were eating wheat in a wheat field. Let's say it together in Spanish. Ready? Tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en un trigal. <sighs> Muy bien! <laughs> you will find that these two words, la confederación and el trigo, will prove important as we learn more about the history of Costa Rica. ¿A dónde quieres viajar? Yo quiero viajar a Costa Rica. ¿Qué quieres hacer allá? Yo quiero ver un volcán. How many new words did you recognize in our dialogue? Did you say two? You're correct. The two words were the verb of the day, viajar, to travel, and volcán, volcano. Let's go over the dialogue together. Student number one asked, ¿A dónde quieres viajar? Where do you want to travel? Say it with me. ¿A dónde quieres viajar? Student number two replied, Yo quiero viajar a Costa Rica. This translates to, I want to travel to Costa Rica. Let's say it together. Yo quiero viajar a Costa Rica. Very good. Next, student number one asked, ¿Qué quieres hacer allá? What do you want to do there? Remember the verb hacer? It has two meanings. Earlier, we learned its meaning of to make. You can also use the verb hacer to mean to do. So, student number one asked, ¿Qué quieres hacer allá? What do you want to do there? Repeat after me. ¿Qué quieres hacer allá? Muy bien. Student number two responded, Yo quiero ver un volcán. I want to see a volcano. Repeat the sentence with me. Yo quiero ver un volcán. Good job, nuevos amigos. Now, let's learn a little about the country that has many volcanoes. Muchos volcanes. Costa Rica is one of the Central American countries that has an indigenous population that is low in number. By the time Columbus arrived on September 18, 1502, there were no more than 20,000 indigenous people who lived in different tribes and had different cultures. 
The Spanish colonists who settled Costa Rica had to work the land themselves. Unlike the other colonies, such as Mexico and Guatemala, Costa Rica's colonists could not use the indigenous people to work the land. As a result, the colony was poor and ignored by Spain for many years. In 1562, the first Spanish governor was sent to Costa Rica from Guatemala. His name was Juan Vasquez de Coronado. At that time, he established the town of Cartago as Costa Rica's capital city. Costa Rica began to thrive economically during the late 1700s with the exportation of wheat, trigo, and tobacco. Central America gained independence from Spain on September 15, 1821. The news reached Costa Rica a month after the event. Then, Costa Ricans had to decide if they should join newly independent Mexico or join a new confederation, Confederación of Central American States. There was disagreement on which to choose, and a civil war started between the leaders of the city of San Jose and their counterparts in Cartago and Heredia. In the end, in 1823, San Jose's people won and Costa Rica joined the Confederation, La Confederación of Central American States. Hola nuevos amigos, ¿cómo están? ¿Listos para aprender un dicho nuevo? I have a new dicho for you today. Make sure you write it down in your diarios de español. Camarón que se duerme, se lo lleva a la corriente. This dicho translated to English means, a shrimp that falls asleep will drown with the current. A similar saying in English would be, you snooze, you lose. It's a well-known fact that if you don't pay attention, you might miss out on something important you need to know. So pay attention. Let's say it together one more time. Camarón que se duerme, se lo lleva la corriente. Muy bien. I'll see you next time, nuevos amigos. Are you paying attention, nuevos amigos? Or are you acting like the little shrimp that falls asleep? It's good to be aware and keep your eyes and ears open. In order to succeed, pay attention to what you are doing and what is going on around you. You want to be successful and not lose out on good opportunities. There is a colorful art form that originated in Costa Rica in the early 20th century. It uses bird feathers, wood, wheels, and paint. What is it? To give you some clues, here are two words to help you. First, the word buey, el buey, which means ox. Say it with me, el buey. The second word is carreta, la carreta, cart. Be sure to roll your R. Listen, la carreta. Repeat after me, la Carreta. Say it again. La carreta. So what is this art form? Let's find out. The ox cart, la carreta, is a strong rustic vehicle with two compact wheels moved by two oxen, dos bueyes. It can easily pass through muddy places, swamps, beaches, hills, and rocky mountains. The ox cart, La Carreta, integrated Costa Rica into international commerce by becoming the main means of export transportation after 1840. The first shipment of coffee, El Café, from Costa Rica to London was transported in 1843 by ox cart to Costa Rica's main ports. Painting ox carts, carretas, developed into a form of original Costa Rican art in the early 20th century. Cow herders decided to add life to ox carts by hand painting them using bright colors and geometrical figures. Sometimes bird feathers are used as paintbrushes. There are never two ox carts, dos carretas, painted the same way. 
all of them contain changes in color tones and patterns. This art has been passed from generation to generation up to the present time. The painted ox cart, La Carreta, has become a Costa Rican symbol throughout the world and has promoted economic development through the production of handicrafts in the Costa Rican cities of Sarchi and Puriscal. Because of its beauty and popularity, the ox cart became the national labor symbol in 1988. Let's go over the second dialogue and practice our pronunciation. Student number one asked, ¿A dónde viaja tu hermano? Where is your brother traveling to? Repeat after me. ¿A dónde viaja tu hermano? Student number two replied, Él viaja a Sarchi. This translates to, he will travel to Sarchi. Say it with me. Él viaja a Sarchi. Very good. Next, student number one asked, ¿Qué quiere hacer allá? What does he want to do there? Repeat after me. ¿Qué quiere hacer allá? Perfecto. Then student number two responded, Él quiere ver las carretas. He wants to see the ox carts. Repeat the sentence with me. Él quiere ver las carretas. Muy bien hecho. Very well done. Mariposa por Federico García Lorca. Mariposa del aire, qué hermosa eres. Mariposa del aire, dorada y verde. Mariposa del aire, y quédate ahí, ahí, ahí. ¿No te quieres parar? ¿Pararte no quieres? Mariposa del aire, dorada y verde. Luz de candil. Mariposa del aire, y quédate ahí, ahí, ahí. Quédate ahí. Mariposa, ¿estás ahí? In this poem, the author Federico García Lorca, who was a famous Spanish writer, talks to a butterfly. He tells her to stay put in one place using the word allí, which means there. So he says, stay there, but the nature of the butterfly is to fly. At the end, Lorca asks the butterfly, are you there? Hinting that the little creature is gone. The poem is so beautiful, spontaneous, and short, just as the flight of a butterfly. People are experiencing a new way to travel. They've discovered they can enjoy the environment through ecotourism. Here are some words you'll need to know as we learn about this educational way to travel. El ecoturismo, ecotourism. El ecoturismo. Repeat after me, nuevos amigos. El ecoturismo. Good job. La lluvia, rain. La lluvia. Say it again, nuevos amigos. La lluvia. Los temporales. Rainy spell. Los temporales. Say it after me, nuevos amigos. Los temporales. Our next word is los aguaceros. Heavy rain. Los aguaceros. Repeat it after me. Los aguaceros. That's a big word. El veranillo. Sudden dry period. El veranillo. Say it again. El veranillo. 
la caminata, hike, la caminata. Say it one more time, nuevos amigos, la caminata. Costa Rica is practically synonymous with ecotourism, el ecoturismo, travel that incorporates education about the environment and promotes preservation of natural resources. The country has many national parks and nature preserves that boast a rich array of birds, mammals, reptiles, and rainforest plants. The variety of birds in particular is astounding. Some 850 species are found in a relatively small area. Most of these national parks are rainforests, bosques tropicales. Therefore, there is a lot of precipitation here, a lot of rain, mucha lluvia. In some places, it rains constantly every day during the rainy season. These rains are los temporales. In other places, you may have sporadic heavy rain, los aguaceros. But then after all the rain, you may also have a sudden dry period called el veranillo, and you won't see one drop of rain during this time. Approximately 25% of the country's land has been set aside in protected areas, earning Costa Rica a reputation as an environmentally sensitive country and leader in ecological conservation. However, non-protected areas have not fared so well. During the past few decades, Costa Rica has had one of the highest rates of deforestation in the world and is coming to terms with the large resorts being built to serve the growing number of travelers. The country has good conditions for a number of adventure sports, among them surfing, river rafting, scuba diving, and hiking, caminata. Those who prefer a less strenuous vacation can view volcanoes, Los Balcanes, take boat trips down jungle rivers, or observe the tortugueros, the turtle nesting grounds, where giant sea turtles emerge from the ocean to lay their eggs. Maybe you will travel and be an ecotourist someday soon. What a different and active way to spend your vacation time. I think looking into a volcano, el volcán, would be very exciting. Ahora es tiempo para la composición estudiantil. It's time for your composition. Imagine that you have just returned from an ecotourism trip to Costa Rica, where you went for a long hike, la caminata, in the rainforest. El Bosque Tropical. Describe the different places you went and what you did there. What birds and animals did you see? Were there any rare plants or butterflies? What was the weather like? Did it rain? Try to use as many vocabulary words as possible as you describe your tour. for our review. Let's go over the new things we've learned today, Nuevos Amigos. The verb of the day was viajar, to travel. And in our first dialogue, our students used the sentences, ¿A dónde quieres viajar? Where do you want to travel? And, yo quiero viajar a Costa Rica. I want to travel to Costa Rica. Our new vocabulary words included the terms la costa, coast, el café, coffee, el volcán, volcano, la confederación, confederation, el trigo, wheat, el buey, ox, la carreta, cart. We also learn the words el ecoturismo, ecotourism, la lluvia, rain, los temporales, rainy spell, los aguaceros, heavy rain, el veranillo, sudden dry period, la caminata, hike. Today's dicho was, camarón que se duerme 
se lo lleva la corriente. Meaning, a shrimp that falls asleep will drown with the current. In other words, you snooze, you lose. In our second dialogue, we conjugated the verb viajar. We used the sentences, ¿A dónde viaja tu hermano? Where is your brother traveling to? Él viaja a Sarchi. He will travel to Sarchi. Be sure to write today's vocabulary words and your composition about your ecotourism trip to Costa Rica in your Diarios de Español. You've paid attention and worked hard today, Nuevos Amigos. You've done a fabulous job. Han hecho un trabajo fabuloso. If you have any interesting information or fun ideas about Latin American culture and history, then I'd like to hear from you. Write me a message and have your teacher email it to me. Mándame un correo electrónico. The email address is nuevosamigos at dallasisd.org. Remember, when you learn to speak another language, you also make new friends. Acuérdense, cuando aprendemos más de un idioma, podemos hacer nuevos amigos. Adiós.